Hello and welcome boys, girls and all those unspecified to uh, a mod overview from the author himself and this is my mod, Challenger's Province Bonanza mod where I've added a ton of provinces but also various other things like countries and cultures etc etc and I will be showing those uh, myself throughout this video so at the moment it's unfinished but I'm working in the extended timeline mod as you can see this is the 58 start from the extended timeline mod and most of the promises are still the same because I haven't finished working on the mod yet. But if we go to the present day bookmark, I can show you more of the features there. So I worked so far on only six countries if I recall correctly. I'm on the sixth right now and those are Canada which uh, looks like this. And there's also America down here. Um, you can probably tell already if you've played this before that it's very different. It's a lot more provinces and a lot more detail in the borders. And I've also worked on Colombia, uh, Morocco down here, Iceland, which went from two provinces to eight provinces, and these are exactly based on their administrative divisions today. Uh, Russia, which was an absolute pain to do, but people seem to be very happy with this one, especially the amount of detail I've gone into is very, <laughs> was very painstaking, honestly. Um, there's more features apart from provinces, but I'll go into that later. Well, that's Russia for now. So that's basically pretty much all I've done so far. Um, all of the provinces come with uh, you know, they, they are all fully researched in a way, with their religions and their histories all being, all setting them apart from the other provinces, as it should be. So all the appropriate research has gone into this. I've also done uh, religious research on, on these areas, so some stuff hasn't changed, like this was always Buddhist from the start, but today, this is the Kalmykia, and um, there's the highest... the place with the highest proportion of Buddhists in Europe um, present day so that's nicely represented and there's of course the uh, Tartar and the Bashkir Muslims here in this area of Russia that's the represented the black dash is because Russia is sec secular today and it kind of hurts my eyes I'm gonna zoom out a bit you got some shamanist areas here from uh, native Tungustic people I, I hope that's what they're called and some more Buddhists in the Tuva Republic in Buraesha there I hope that's how you say it. Um, over here, I've gone into massive extensive research into Catholic and Protestant distributions in Canada and the USA, and you'll notice a new religion here and here. And this is to do with my recent integration with Benji's religions mod, which adds a ton of them. But he's mainly worked on not so much modern day religions, but mainly... Um, native religions. You can see more of this in Africa. You've got Yoruba, Imohag, and uh, well, if I go back, actually, show the 1444 start. Um, you can probably see it without the black dash lines as well. So here you have Imohag, everything, Bieri, Odina, all these things that were not there before, but th this has gone into a great amount of detail with the religions, and I've also I also quite like what he did with the um, symbols. He has these ni this nice pattern going on right now, which I, I'm really quite fond of. Uh, he changed the the look of the Catholic symbol as well, and the Orthodox ones, and the Muslim one. It it looks very colourful and friendly. I, I really quite like what he's done there. Um, a lot more of you may be familiar with the 1444 start, so I'm going to show you what the world looks like in the places where I've worked. So this is Russia. You can still see Muscovy and Novgorod battling it out, basically, but the borders are much more defined. You know, both Novgorod and Muscovy have a lot more territories. Countries that were previously one province miners are now, uh, like Yaroslav is now two. And you've also got some new countries that were not represented before, such as Pronsk, which is uh, right now, I think it if you go in the past, it was a vassal state of uh, Ryazan, but now it's, at this point in time, independent. Um, 
so yeah, that's basically it. Is I have the natives, and then um, I know that some areas are right now obviously slightly more ba um, imbalanced, such as countries in Russia may have a little bit more power over these places in Europe because they basically have more provinces. But over time, this will balance out, and I play with my mod, but it's still enjoyable for me. I don't have any specific problems with countries in the regions I've worked on being overpowered. I am currently playing a campaign as Quito, where I started in this area, but the Muisca aren't really... They, give me, they didn't give me any problems, nor did anyone from there, so... Yeah. This is what the world looks like. Um, I'm not quite sure what else to show. So I have these. There's also another mod that I've integrated with, which is... Um, well, it's not a mod, but uh, Chicken... I think that's what it's called. Um, it's Polish spelled, but I think it's pronounced chicken. <laughs> but you can look him up. Um, he made a trade goods mod for me, which adds a lot more trade goods. They are not implemented in the map right now because of some problems that I've asked him to fix first. But uh, they are in the ledger, so I will show you when I go in. Um, so if I go in the... Go to present day bookmark, because that has a few more things. And I will start playing as the first country I worked on. Let's go with Canada. So, apart from apart from the religions and the provinces, I've also added cultures. And uh, basically, this is um, at least for the British culture. First of all, I'm sure you, yeah? because uh, the standard game had American as a culture, but why have American and not Canadian and not Australian and stuff like that? So, I've taken it upon myself to make Canadian, Brit British Canadian, and French Canadian, which is spelt with an E, and also uh, represented some areas that are still occupied mainly by Native Americans to this day. Um, there are also some Scottish descended areas here, which I've kept as Scottish. So you can see this is still part of the British group, but it's not, it used to be English, but it's not English anymore. So that's good. Other thing I've done is I've added Castizo and Mestizo. Obviously only in Colombia. As of now, because I have not worked anywhere else in Latin America. But uh, yeah, Castizo is mainly more Spanish people. Pure, of pure Spanish origin, mainly. And Mestizo are people who are kind of half Spanish, kind of half Native American, and their genes are mixed, so they're Mestizo. And obviously Colombia comprises of a lot of them, especially, you know, around the capital. And I also have still some Native American, uh, you know, provinces here. Places that are not entirely Mestizo or Castizo. So, yeah, I've done that. Oh, and also accurate, more accurate um, redistribution of old culture, so I have changed some around to better represent the Berber and the Moroccan distributions in Morocco. Also for the Scandinavians, I've added Icelandic and Faroese, instead of just it being Norwegian, which it clearly isn't. Um, there's also some more cultures in the past, there's uh, before, before uh, the Scandinavians were Christianized, there's West Norse and East Norse as a culture. Where West Norse comprises of Norwegian, Faroese, and Icelandic, and East Norse is Danish, Swedish, and Gutnish, which is not here today because this Gotland is now not really Gutnish anymore. But if you go in the past a bit, you will find that culture in that one province. Also in Russia, I've added a few uh, cultures. I need to fix that. Sorry about that. That will be fixed. Um, Yes, I've added uh, what about the Chuvash for the Chuvash Republic. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what else I've added? Kalmyk. I'm pretty sure this one I added for Kalmykia. Yeah, because I think it was just Mongol before, but they are not Mongol. They are Kalmyk people, Samoyed people, and Yakutians here in the Yakut Republic. Oh, and uh, you can probably see that I've. This is exactly the shape if you go and look it up of Yakutia in uh, Russia there, which is the largest administrative division of any nation in the world, and it has 
not exactly this shape, but I have had to morph it to because the map basically sort of distorts around here. They haven't gone into too much detail with northeast Russia, so I still made it go around what the rivers should be like. So this river does go exactly like this. You have other administrative divisions. All of them are exactly perfectly defined in this. So this, this, this. Um, if you go all the way like that, this is Irkutsk here. And uh, Amur Oblast, which goes, I think it goes like that. Yep. So they're all defined, and within them there's more divisions that I felt suitable. So apart from the religious and cultural research that I've done, I've also gone into researching with uh, nations and seeing how they were like in the past. I've got it up uh, right now, I've got the Charlemagne bookmark in 769 AD, and you can probably tell there's quite a few new countries here. There's um, all of these, like Cheremisa, Morchkava, Ugra, and uh, these, like for example this one, Morchkava, is, is basically Moscow in Finnish, I think, but this is not a Slavic nation, it is actually a Finno-Ugric nation. And uh, yeah, I've even gone to that detail. So that has a very sim uh, flag very similar to the Russian one, but it's Sormenusko. So that's it basically throughout um, ev everywhere. I've really gone to a lot of research everywhere, but uh, it's including uh, Morocco. But Iceland and the Americas were basically you know, colonized a bit later, so they don't go into as much detail before 1444. And you can go through time with this and see that it is throughout the ages that I've done this. If I make this play forward, you can see history unfolding. This Kievan Rus. Yeah, lasts for a long time. So yeah, then it breaks up, and then the proper happenings are documented properly. You'll see this uh, rather a new and slightly more powerful nation, Rostov, which was there in the past, um, but extended timeline mod failed to represent it. But that's okay. It was in CK2 as well. Rostov, a pretty prominent nation in this area. And also, yes, you ha I have put, for at least most of them, I've put the correct rulers at the correct time. Um, so that's a good amount of detail I've gone into. I've also done Morocco with the uh, very various... Oh, and also modeled some wars, for example. The Almohad had uh, conquest of Almoravid was not there before as a war. Also added that and various other things. Um, so if we go forward in time with this, you can see hopefully a couple new nations in Morocco too. Yep, there's one. There's, no, I didn't add this one. I added this one. Tangier. An independent state right here. And uh, if we go back again. So I've added these. And these are based more on uh, CK2 nations that were around this area. Because uh, Crusader Kings does a good job of, you know, showing us there, and, it, and it's still official paradox history, technically, so I took it upon myself to code in everything that they've done. The border of detail basically goes up to at most here, so this place isn't finished yet, so you can ignore that. And then, that's it. I guess, before this, there's not much to show. Because there were, there were rarely any small countries here. So yeah, um, apart from that one uh, thing I must mention before you go back and analyze this entire video very, very hard, is that you might have noticed the USA isn't actually completed yet. There are still areas, like here, that I have not done. But you, as recently as yesterday, you know, I've done This Is Washington. And no one knows what it looks like, apart from me. And I finished this yesterday. I haven't quite nudged all the cities yet properly, so Bellingham is not there. It is there, for example, so I still need to do that. But I usually leave that until last, so I can do multiple states at once. But yeah, um, you will also notice that alongside the Russian correct administrative divisions, I've also done that everywhere else, even though there are straight borders. Yes, I'm sacrificing in a way, beauty, but I'm trying to make it look nice either way, even with straight borders. 
Uh, as you can see, the rectangular shape of Saskatchewan. This is in Canada. And various other internal divisions of Saskatchewan are, are modeled here as well. Sometimes bunched together. So you have the counties of U.S. states. So this is South Dakota. You have its counties and a group of them will make this place, Cedar Falls as well. And Pierre. And uh, these do follow the actual borders of those counties. Just some of them group together in a specific way. Um, and that's about it. The last thing I wanted to show was the uh, trade goods that Chicken added. Uh, again, I'm sorry, Chicken, if I <laughs> say your name wrong. But, uh, as I said, they're not in the game yet because it's a little bit buggy, but when it's fixed, they will be there and they will be in the right places. So if I go here, you can see he's added all the way from coal down there. So he's had coal, tin, sulfur, steel, lumber, glass, lead, iron, copper, and uranium. But what I love about this is his description. Coal is fun, tin is light, sulfur is burning, steel is cold, lumber is brown, glass is transparent, lead is heavy. Uh, he did not add iron um, or copper, but he added uranium, which is not healthy. So, thumbs up to him for... Uh, doing those very creative descriptions which are actually very creative uh, that made me laugh quite a lot when I first read them so yeah the last thing I want to show you with my mod is something that I work equally hard on as I do on uh, the provinces and I feel like this is a very overlooked thing that people don't really care much about so if I go into command no, that's the wrong one yep so you can see more clearly basically in this area that I'm going around, so from there, like that, okay, this western bit of Canada, I have my colonial dynamic province names, which basically for every nation, I have gone and taken the naming method of these and translated it. So let's say Vancouver here, I haven't just gone on Wikipedia and looked it up on different languages how they write Vancouver because... A, most of the time it's the same, and B, Vancouver was named after a a British naval leader whose surname was Vancouver, and he explored this area. And um, so it wouldn't really make sense in an alternate history, say, say if the Germans colonized this, that they would name it after a British naval officer. Why would they? They would call it after a German naval officer who very likely explored this area. So, I've done that, and... Uh, there's 60 something languages I've done it for, including some Indian ones as well. So I don't know what I'm going to showcase, but let's say I'm going to do Integrate Canada. Let's go with Romania. Nope, that's the Roman Empire. <laughs> Romanian RMN. Right? And this is the Romanian. Um, province names, which I, I know were good because I speak Romanian, so uh, any mistakes here would not come through. So, for example, Vancouver is no longer that, it's now Cantacuzino, which is the, the surname of a, you know, Romanian person. Caraja, you have uh, Caribou, Posada, Suswap, Cap Mare, and you had stuff like Swift Current here, which now in Romanian is Curent Rapid. So, I've done this for other languages, and where I, where I could, I I, I can put in um, these hats here, you know, like uh, the symbols on letters. But sometimes it doesn't let me. Like for example, this T should have a comma underneath it. To m it's not, otherwise you can read it as print, but it's print, and that T is done by the T with the comma. But they don't let me so. I'm sorry for any languages I, I unintentionally offended with that. So I can show you different languages. I can show you... I've even gone and done Punjab. So if I go let Punjab integrate this. These are very uh, Indian sounding names like Khan Forta Jasa or Vadedesira. You know, a lot of, you know, and Indian Punjab names, Ranjit, 
And Vancouver here you have Campbell. It's just, um, I like doing it. And it makes, uh, when, I, when I'm done with this entire region, when I have any nation colonizing, and mostly I have, you know, Spain and France and stuff, so Punjab is probably extremely pointless. But, people have some crazy campaigns, so you never know. Um, yeah, so anyone, even if you start, let's say, in uh, the earliest bookmarks, you have the Roman Empire colonizing, if you decide to play that far, you would have, um, go back to the Roman Empire, I need this. You have all the stuff named in Latin, so Flumen Pax, you know, Stagnum Servis. This is all Latin names, and I just feel that this uh, makes you a little bit more, you know, a little bit more. I don't know, <sighs> immense in the game. I guess I, I, I'm not quite sure of the word, but yeah. So this is my uh, my mod, and it's still very much a work in production. I will have the USA finished, and the next nations will be Venezuela, and then Algeria, and then Norway. I hope you can probably see the pattern. I'm not doing all the nations in North America at once, because I will get bored. So I go one from here, one from here, one from here, there, and then all the way. I know I've, I've done Russia, and then sort of gone back to North America, and I've skipped Oceania, because uh, most of them are islands, but I've decided I will go back and do Australia first and then um, I think some of these islands you see are grouped together so I could split them up into various ones maybe Papua New Guinea have more provinces there so that's the plan for the mod and that's the overview uh, I hope you had fun I hope you enjoy my mod and if you like it let me know I appreciate all the comments because I work very hard on this and if you see any bugs, let me know. I'll fix them. I have them fixed all the time. So yeah, uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoy my mod. Thank you.